Hey there, thanks for having me into your home. I wanna talk a little bit about our building program. In our recent series in the book of Acts, it became abundantly clear that God grows the church. Do you remember what Jesus promised? He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. This truth that God builds the church helps us to focus on the right things. As God grows the church, we want to be faithful. We want to be faithful to do what God has called us to do, our mission. We want to be faithful to prioritize what God says is important, our values. And we want to be faithful to follow God's leading, our vision. By God's grace, our church has done this in the past, responding to the growth that God provided by building a building. By God's grace, we seek to do it again. In order to be faithful to multiply his followers, we can learn from the past, take action in the present, and prepare for the future. There's a lot we can learn from the past. Even the recent history of our own congregation, it wasn't that long ago, January of 1996, just 28 years ago, that Maranatha Baptist Church came into existence here in Grimes. The church experienced growth in multiple ways. God provided spiritual growth, people came to Christ and made sacrifices for the good of the body. But not only did they grow spiritually, but they grew numerically. They went from a home Bible study to a full gathering in the Grimes Community Center, which was then Dallas Center Grimes Junior High. Notice these pictures of uh, of those days back in 1996. There's the high school, and there's a gathering inside. You see, they knew what it was to set up and tear down chairs week by week. It's in our DNA. And God provided growth. By 1998, the church began construction on what is now our current building. Members gave sacrificially, took out a significant loan by faith, and construction began quickly. As God provided growth, they responded faithfully and took action. They even gathered in a semi-constructed building. Here you see a picture of that. Construction can be uncomfortable, but it's part of the process of faithfully following the Lord. But I also appreciate how they planned for the future. The building wasn't designed merely to meet their present needs. The building was designed for growth. Trusting that God would provide further growth, they designed a removable wall so the sanctuary could be expanded. And they even had plans for a future worship center. You see, we don't get to choose what size our church will be. That's God's decision. He grows the church. We must be faithful to learn from the past, take action in the present, and prepare for the future. And that's exactly what we're seeking to do today. As you know, God has provided growth in our church in significant ways. Most significantly, people are coming to faith in Christ and being baptized. Praise God, last year, we saw the most conversions and baptisms we've had in the six years that I've been here as pastor. More and more of our members are obeying Jesus by making disciples, and we want to be even more faithful in these ways. But God has also provided numerical growth. That 230-seat sanctuary that they built in 1998, which can only hold about 180 comfortably, has become too small for us. At first, we responded with a growing room, an overflow room with a live stream of the service. We hovered right around 200 with 10 to 20 in the growing room, but we continued to grow. Soon, the attendance hovered around 230, and then we had 40 to 50 in the growing room. Towards the end of, it, u- end of its use, we had 250 in attendance with 60 to 70 in the growing room. So in September, we started meeting in the gym, and God continues to provide growth. Right now, our weekly attendance is right around 270, and we can all be in one room. Those who attend regularly, including all our friends and family, include 410 individuals. In fact, if everybody came on the same Sunday, we would fill every single one of our 410 chairs. But remember, all of this is God's work. He provided our growth. Our task is to be faithful. We embrace the sacrifices like setting up chairs and giving sacrificially towards a project. We adjust for our present needs, serving the needs of the congregation, but we can also prepare for the future, making plans by faith, trusting that God will give growth. Based on that desire and God's leading, we want to follow him with this vision to multiply his followers. God gives the growth, but we can be faithful to do our part. Remember the experience of the early church? Acts 6-7 puts it well. Then the word of God spread and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly. As we proclaim God's word and God brings more followers, 
we want a purpose to prepare a meeting space that serves the needs of the congregation and prepares for future growth. Secondly, to study the book of Romans, to grow in our understanding of the gospel that saves and shapes the church. Third, to proclaim that gospel personally and corporately. And fourth, to disciple one another toward maturity in Christ. This is about being faithful. You'll notice that only one of those three goals has to do with the building. Certainly, God's made it clear that we need to respond to the growth he's provided by making some adjustments to our building. But as we do that, we must not lose sight of God's priorities. God's mission for us is to make disciples. Even as we make building plans and we want to grow in our understanding of the gospel, we want to grow in our faithfulness to proclaim it and to make disciples. The wonderful thing is that the last three of these bullet points cost us very little. They involve investment of time and prayer. Sure, the first one involves time, prayer, and money, and we're embarking on a concerted effort to raise money to renovate our current building and construct new spaces to provide for the current needs of this congregation and to prepare for future growth. So let me walk through briefly some of those proposed changes. In working with our architects, Visioneering Studios, they've encouraged us toward a robust master plan. This aligns beautifully with our goal, not only to serve the present needs of the congregation, but also to prepare for future growth. Grimes is one of the fastest growing communities in the state of Iowa. Rather than building a worship center that would fit our current congregation, 400 to 500 seats, they encouraged us to steward our resources by preparing for the future. Based on property size, they estimate we can only do one major expansion. Once you take into account parking and water retention and driveways, they estimate that our property be maxed out around 700 to 800 people. Furthermore, they pointed out that our gymnasium, which we already have 450 seat worship center, why spend millions of dollars on a 500 seat worship center only to add 50 seats? On the other hand, the expense of a 700 to 800 seat worship center estimated to be about $8 million appears to be just out of reach at the moment. So they recommended a phased approach make minimal adjustments to our current building to provide for growth as we meet for worship in our gym during phase one. Then approach the larger worship center in phase two. Their recommendation makes sense and seems to be a wise stewardship of of the resources that God has given to us. So phase one will involve some interior renovation. While we aren't planning on the gym being a permanent worship space for us, there are some interior adjustments that we can make that will serve the present needs of the congregation. So you can see what phase one looks like there at the full scope. And then on the interior, you can see, we'd like to do something to increase the traffic flow in and out of the gymnasium. We'd like to spruce up our breezeway entrances so that as people come in and out, they have a beautiful foyer and social space for their gatherings. We'd like to adjust the old sanctuary uh, to provide classroom space. We'd like to add additional restrooms And we'd like to increase the kitchen size, as well as adding some parking. Those aren't reflected in the picture. Now, we don't have exact plans for these. We're working with the architect to keep the costs of phase one low while also meeting the current needs of our congregation. Obviously, our desire is to be able to move forward with phase two as soon as possible. And so here you see the full scope of phase two. Zoomed in a little more, you see that there would be a 700 to 800 seat worship center there. Uh, We would seek to build an additional foyer space with entrances to the north and to the west, add significant restrooms in that foyer space, as well as significant parking around the building. And this would lead to uh, just some pictures here of what those final renderings could look like. At first, our giving will focus on phase one, and our current estimates are 2.8 million, but we're working to reduce that number in hopes of moving to phase two more quickly. Obviously, if enough money came in, we could begin phase two immediately after phase one. I'm so excited about what God is doing here at Maranatha. Now it's to us to respond with faithfulness, to be faithful to our mission to make disciples, to be faithful to God's values for us, and to be faithful to follow him in this vision to multiply his followers. It will involve sacrifice and it will sometimes be uncomfortable, but it's in our DNA. God's called us to this very task. So let's follow him. Let's prepare a building that not only meets the present needs of this congregation, but one that prepares for the future growth that we trust God will give for his glory. 
Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you'll have the opportunity to raise those questions in your group. We look forward to involving everyone in this project and hopefully answering your questions along the way. Thanks so much. Enjoy your time together this evening.